it started out as a great dinner aboard a cruise ship, even though all six of us gathered around the table had never met. I take that back. There were alliances. My husband and I, we'd met the other married couple briefly the evening before, and the other two women who joined us were traveling together with a group from Australia. Mind if we join you, Carly said as they sat down with us. We welcomed them to the table, introduced ourselves all around, traded basic information, and then the amusement began. Carly talked nonstop through a four-course, two-hour dinner. We learned about such things as her daughter's divorce, her daughter's job in Singapore, her utility expenses, the cost of education in the various countries where she'd lived, solutions to poor education around the world, compulsory voting in Australia, the tours she had taken, diets that worked. The waiter delivered and picked up her shrimp cocktail appetizer untouched delivered and retrieved her arugula salad, still intact, delivered and removed her lamb entree with only two bites missing, delivered and removed her cream brulee untouched. She did manage to sip hot tea between sentences. My husband later called it amazement. The other couple simply looked stupefied and weary until they left the table with this line. We're, we're sorry to interrupt, but we're going back to our cabin we're going to practice our tango lessons. I call the dinner scene amusement earlier because I was already tired from a 12-hour tour day and was perfectly willing to sit quietly and let her have the floor. I became intrigued to see just how long she could talk non-stop, seemingly without realizing that no one else was participating in the conversation. But you, yourself, may not be similarly amused when that happens to ruin your own party or your own business meeting or your own conference calls. These motor mouths can sidetrack almost any discussion. Should you want to stop a motor mouth, here are some tips. One, shift gears with a transition phrase like, Incidentally, that reminds me, or you make a good point about X, I'm also concerned that, and move back to the topic, or let me add a point here by saying, or on the other hand, that's not always the case. I'm thinking of what happened last week when, or that's one way to look at it. The other side is, and then bridge back. Of course, when you break in with such transitions, do so confidently with a strong voice and engage others with your eye contact to bring them into the conversation as well. Another tip to stop the motor mouth. Call the motor mouth's name. Motor mouths become more aware of others trying to enter the conversation when they hear their name called. Examples, Jordan, let me jump in here with another advantage I see to the client. Or Carlos, what you're saying reminds me of a couple of other things we need to discuss while the group is together. Another tip in shutting down the motor mouth, toss the conversational ball to someone else. You can stop the motor mouth on behalf of others in the group. That is when you see one person dominating, save the day by intercepting the conversational ball and then toss. I understand your point of view, Ken. What do some of the rest of you think about how to spend those funds? Or what do some of the rest of you think about the idea Jolie just mentioned? Or sounds like you've had a great bit of experience here, Mike. Anybody else had a great vacation this year? Another tip, ask a closed question. Asking an open question like, why did you or how did you do something, just spurs that motor mouth into high gear. But instead, ask a closed question, those that can't be answered in just a word or two. Closed questions tend to bring them to agreement and bring them to closure. Another tip, use body language to turn off that flow. Break eye contact, turn away, put on that expressionless face. Point your feet and your body toward the door. All of that is signaling to them to shut it down. If all of those other things fail, have a frank discussion. 
just tell them that they are run, ruining your social event or your meeting. Have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. That's sometimes in order. Let me know if you've been successful in stopping the motor mouth from sabotaging your parties or your meetings or your conference calls. Comment in the box below some of the techniques you've used.